1987, the um, Pennsylvania state treasurer at the time was uh, recently convicted of uh, accepting bribes and um, basically of corruption. And so he fought a long fight and ended up, you know, he was sentenced. He was probably going to prison for a long time. His political career was over. He was disgraced. It was a, a, a huge scandal at the time. And so after his conviction, nobody, you know, he basically kind of went away. Nobody heard from him for a couple months. And then he decided to suddenly give a press conference. And he prepared a statement in which he protested his innocence and he claimed that he was a, a victim, that basically it was other people out to get him. And despite this, you know, his main thoughts were with his family and um, his hope for a, a better justice system in the future, a justice system that had wronged him, according to him. Um, at, the, at the end of this long um, speech in this press conference with all the cameras there and a bunch of people around, he passed out a bunch of uh, notes to followers and then pulled out a manila envelope and withdrew a, a, a pistol. And then everybody was kind of shocked and they were like, you know, what are you doing? Like, put it down. And then he essentially calmed everybody down and said, be careful, this will hurt somebody. And, uh, and then basically put it into his mouth and then shot himself and killed himself um, on live TV. And the clip was then repeated on the news and it was this, it ended up being this, uh, you know, millions of people, especially in Pennsylvania, ended up seeing this live suicide. So my sister showed me this when I was like a kid, you know, I was like eight or nine, totally terrified me, uh, messed me up, and uh, it kind of stuck with me. I think for the first time ever in a part, I have written in the margin, robot country. Yeah. Which is like <laughs> a very interesting margin to have in a score. I had no idea about the backstory and the um, lyrics are sort of heartfelt, like emotional, manly lyrics. Um, wasn't quite sure of the context. And then at the end, there's also there's another section with the strings where Matt asked us to sound seasick and kind of nauseated. Um, and only, in, in our rehearsal, only after we took a break and I ate a sandwich did Matt tell us what this was actually about. <laughs> um, and it, it was a very interesting way to approach it. And then we looked at this work we had done, Country Robot, nauseating string section, uh, and it made perfect sense. And for me, when I see a, a new a new score, a new part that is highly detailed, I have a certain like amount of um, reserve seeing those things because I think, well, maybe this will change in rehearsal, you know, maybe this will change in the context of the whole piece. Or, but it was interesting that I did not that did not happen with this. Everything was really it was it's very specific, but it's very considered. Um, and actually, the uh, you know through the rehearsal process, and it's great also that the composer is performing with this. You know that's always a, you know also kind of like a special dynamic. But a lot of those very specific things um, through the rehearsal process and uh, with Matt, um, I have like an understanding of why they're there, and um, they're they're all like central, I think, to the the musical content. They're not just sort of like a um, an added layer of interest. I'm pretty concerned with how the audience is going to feel. I don't necessarily want them to feel a specific exact way, but I want to kind of send them uh, a mixture of um, expressions that I hope will provide them with some kind of complex cocktail of emotions. I write music that's very tonal, very standard, there's nothing that you're going to hear that's going to be a, a brand new sound or something shocking your ears or anything like that, but ideally I want to make you feel something. I like the idea of not being able to pin down how you feel about something. 